In this video clip, we're going to show using the data mover job that was created in the UI, both without and with a unit of work. That is, uh, allowing data mover to create its own unit of work ID, and then we'll pass in a unit of work ID. This shows how you can relate all the actions of a data mover job with some external uh, event stream. So first of all, here we are with at the uh, data mover uh, window uh, on the server, and we're just going to run the job with all the defaults. And the data mover goes ahead and reads the job, and it requests the job start. It really doesn't take very long to run. We remember we are copying four tables from one system to another system and this is a static job so there are there are no other options to do that's one of the drawbacks of a static job but the benefit of a static job is that it will start up and run faster not run faster but it will initiate faster in this case we're copying four tables at the same time once this one this job has finished we will then start the job again but this time passing it a different or a specific unit of work ID so that we'll be able then in the TMSM log viewer or event viewer we will be able to look at these two sets and be able to see um, the different units of work and how they're grouped together so that one completed successfully we will now redo that, but add in a unit of work. And the key is the unit of work ID. That's the f what we have to use. And then we now call it TDM demo one as the unit of work ID, and we'll run that one. And it's just, it is exactly the same job being run a second time, but now we'll have a, a specific unit of work that we know we can look for. We can look for TDM-Demo1 as a unit of work filter on that, and we'll get just this, the events associated with this unit of work. And if this were part of such um, a job such as an ETL load, then the ETL load may well be given a specific unit of work, and then we can pass that unit of work ID onto Data Mover to do its portion of that ETL job. And then we will be able to associate all the events with that single unit of work ID. And while we're waiting for that to finish, I can take you over to, oh, it's just finished, take you over now to the Viewpoint server. And we'll open up, first of all, we'll open up the data mover portlet. And here you'll see that um, I filtered on TDM demo already. And you see we got two completed jobs, um, just a little over a minute apart. Let's take the first one. And look at the status. And here it gives us more information. It says that we had four objects copied from Chile to Astro using credentials for TDM underscore user zero. Gives us the start time, end time, duration, and so on. If you want more detail, we go on to click on view log, and now you'll get as much detail as you could possibly want from Data Mover. You see all the different steps. And then within each step, there's all the tasks that are done. Then you get in individual log information. So as you can see, there's almost excruciating detail. Uh, there's a, a lot of detail provided to you through Data Mover, uh, through the Data Mover portlet. There isn't a unit of work ID here. You can't associate this uh, information with any other external set of events. 
using the data mover uh, portal because it's not tied into uh, the uh, TMSM. So I close that window there and then go to save jobs and I could look at the second one it'll give me the same information so we won't waste time doing that we'll just go back to the, all the portlets shown here in fact I'll minimize that one again and this time we're going to go and look at the log viewer so we'll look inside the log viewer and sometimes it does take a while for uh, the events to turn up in TMSM uh, mainly because I'm using a set of VMs and processes tend to run a little slower um, plus we do have uh, there are refresh cycles that TMSM goes through and it's still waiting to refresh this window so um, bear with me and I will bear with it for a while until it refreshes again I will see if I can speed things up by just refreshing the whole screen that sometimes does the trick at least it seems to it doesn't <laughs> I know technically it really probably isn't doing that and hopefully we will have some events in a moment or at least we will have the headings that we can filter on There we go. That did take a short while. Apologize about that. So we're looking at all the events that you see in the time uh, here, that, uh, the, that event timestamp that occurred in the last 10 minutes. And this shows, let me bring this window down a little bit more. And here we've got them. Unit work ID here is the default ones. TDM demo dash and then a date timestamp. So that's the way Data Mover is going to associate a unit work ID, which may well not align itself with any external event stream, such as an ETL job, which may have a different unique ID. So that's why it's good to be able to put in your own. So here we will put in our, our new one that we created, and we called it Demo1. And we'll filter on that. And TDM is, uh, thrashes around all the data. And it should produce a filtered list. Here we are, just TDM demo one. Now, as you can see, there are two pages, a total of 33 rows uh, of events from this one job that we were in. And you can see, if I scroll here, that it tells you about the uh, timestamp, the resource ID, resource type, doing a lot of exporting and so forth, and job names. And as you go further along here into the event message, you get more information, such as um, it's now working on uh, TDM PC customers, and then periods, and so on in the number of rows. Now as you can imagine if this was part of a multi-step load process you could well get all these events uh, mixed in with all other event IDs and if you didn't pass in a specific unit of work ID. So this allows you as I say to group them all together and this is how you would do it. Well that's the end of this uh, little video clip. I hope it was helpful.